Welcome to new Scandinavian cooking from Finland. I'm Andreas Vistad. Finland is in many ways quite different from the other Nordic countries with a unique language and a dramatic history torn between East and West. It is autumn and the rye harvest is already well on its way, whereas wheat is the most important ingredient in bread in most of Southern Europe, rye has been much more important in Northern Europe and in Finland particularly. And it is not surprisingly the most important ingredient in Finnish rye bread. In today's program, Finnish chef Sara Lafontaine and I will show you some interesting ways to use rye in cooking. And it's not only bread, is it, Sara? No, it's not. Andres, you're right. Rye is much more than just the bread, especially for us Finns. Rye bread is the heart of Finnish cooking, and we normally say if the bread isn't good, then the life isn't good. So today I will make what I believe is the perfect sandwich. I will also show you how to make a traditional rye bread and how it's eaten together with that delicious roast beef dish, spiced with the personal twist of my own. The open face sandwich is Typical for all the Nordic countries here in Finland, it's slightly different, served with crayfish, sour cream, and of course, rye bread. But Sarah, you are, how should I put it, nicely dressed like a queen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I thought it was appropriate for King's Road. It is, after all, not just the name. This is the actual road used by the Swedish king and his convoys for centuries. Sweden and Finland were the same country and the king made regular tours to inspect his kingdom. The King's Road goes right past to the southernmost tip of Finland. And actually, before the Middle Ages, the sea road was the most important highway for transportation. The many shipwrecks along the coast of Finland are evidence of this. These rock carvings in the port town of Hunger were used as a sort of port log, visible for all to see. It is somewhat impractical, I guess, but this way the history of the place is written in stone, quite literally. Before we continue our trip, I'm going to show you how to make an easy food to take on a journey. Dry bread are traditionally the best way to store grain. And dry bread made it possible for a previous generation to have enough food to get through the long and cold winters. Now I'm gonna do a delicious open face sandwich using this rye bread. Let's start by doing a marinade for these potatoes, which I have boiled and sliced. So first we need some lemon. About one tablespoon. And then I need some small capers. These are really flavorful. Mm. So about one tablespoon. There, that's good. We need some more flavor, some fresh dill. Oh, it smells so good. About one tablespoon. I think that that's enough. We need some oil, a good drizzle. I will season it with some salt. Actually, quite a lot of salt, so all the potatoes will have some flavor as well. There and black pepper. Good. And then I will add my potato slices. Now you can see all the potatoes will get the flavor as well. And now I'm ready to plate my sandwich. The hard boiled egg, fresh finished crab locks, I think that one slice is good because these are quite big. And then I need an onion. So really thin slices. And just put it here nicely. Really 
really pops it up, doesn't it? Then I need an easy sauce, which I actually have in here. I have some creme fraiche. I have a little bit credit, horseradish, salt, pepper, and a splash of water. And you just kind of shake it, and it's ready. And now I just pour it over. So this is a super easy sauce. There. And then a secret ingredient. Super, super good caviar. It's quite powerful and flavorful. Mm, oh, it looks so good, doesn't it? Mmm, ooh, so good. So here is my divine sandwich. What do you think? to recognize the rye field with its gray greenish color and its feathery mustache like appearance very stylish i think this is rye a wonderful grain it's tasty full of fiber and it's really good for your digestion But rye didn't become popular just because of its flavor. It was much more reliable. In Northern and Eastern Europe, you would have bad years, maybe every fifth year or every 10th year. Normally you could grow wheat just fine, but those years it would fail disastrously. But since rye is so hardy, it would still keep growing. And I tell you, you can't make it without food, even if it's just every 10th year. And that's why the people of Eastern and Northern Europe embraced rye so lovingly. It saved their life. If you travel in the Nordic countries, one of the things that you'll encounter everywhere is the open face sandwich. It's one of the most generous expressions of everyday cooking. And it's slightly different wherever you go in the Nordic countries. In Denmark, it's typically made with white bread, mayonnaise, and lots and lots of shrimps. If you go to Norway, it will be made with uh, darker bread, brown bread, and uh, typically smoked salmon instead of shrimps. And then as you travel eastwards, it will also change. So here in Finland, it will be made with dark rye bread. And since there's not that much salmon and not many shrimps in this uh, sea, you will also make it with crayfish instead. Crayfish is really one of the flavors of both Finland and Sweden. I'll start off by frying the bread in a little bit of butter. And I'll flavor the butter with some dill, which gives it a hint of sweetness. This is really rustique bread. It's real peasant bread. It has a slightly sour flavor, so I think it's really nice with the sweetness from the lightly brown butter and the dill. It's perhaps not the uh, healthiest thing, but it is a really kind of generous set of flavors, and I like that. Uh, so I'm just frying the bread for a minute or two, and then I'm adding some sour cream as well. With the sour cream, you got some more of that sourness uh, to the flavor spectrum, and it gives you a really different experience. And then I've got some caraway. That's a typical Eastern European spice, isn't it? It's used in the Scandinavian aquavit, but in many dishes in Eastern Europe as well. Then the crayfish. If you haven't tasted crayfish, you'd be surprised at how sweet it tastes. Uh, some shellfish have that level of sweetness that you can normally not find in savory foods. We only use the crayfish tails, and if you can't get really fresh crayfish, you can often buy them either frozen or just the tails preserved in a salt brine, and they're quite good actually, even though they're not as good as the freshly caught ones. And a little bit of dill as well, and this is it. There's this little play between the dill and the caraway. 
both are really important uh, spices here or herbs here in Finland, but one, namely caraway, comes from the east and dill typically comes from the west and both meet up in this sandwich. From about 1200 until 1809, Finland and Sweden were part of the same kingdom. But it isn't quite that simple. Long before there were national borders, Finland was bilingual. Finnish was spoken inland, while Swedish was spoken in the coastal areas. The Swedish speakers were a seafaring people, and since the Viking Age, they'd crossed the seas searching for comfortable places to dwell, some of them settling along the Finnish coast. While the Finnish speakers originally were inland hunters, lake and forest dwellers, during the Middle Ages they moved and settled in the coastal regions as well. Since then, both Swedish and Finnish speakers have peacefully coexisted along the Finnish coast. The King's Road is dotted with quaint villages, and in medieval times, houses like this one were used as roadside inns. All the farmers along the King's Road were ordered to make sure that there was an inn every 40 miles, about 60 kilometers, the distance a horse could travel in a single day before needing food and rest. The history books tell us that once a convoy of 106 members of the royal court came traveling through and sought shelter for the night in one of these inns. Needless to say, many of the neighbors had to chip in, and perhaps not everyone had a comfortable night's sleep. Wow, I see you traveling style today. Oh, I would love it if you could be like this every day. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you around. Great. This farm dates back to 1326 and is still run by Swedish-speaking Finns. Barbara Vespan runs it now and her daughter Anna will take over after her. Today, the Swedish speakers make up only 6% of the population in Finland, and they have their own minority rights, their own daycare, schools, traditions, and protection of language. farm is uh, organic? Yes. The cows, they have a bit more space in the cow house and, and they eat organic food that we produce ourselves. Okay. And, and, and then they live on this clover you see here. Clover is the best motor in, in organic farming because it takes nitrogen from the air. And it feeds the cows also. And it feeds okay. the cows. So everybody's also. happy. And the everybody's cows feeds happy. us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, I would love to get a few colors. So I'm glad to get that one. There you go. Thank you. culture have a lot of similarities, intertwined after centuries of living together and sharing the region's different products. Finnish speciality is rye bread, and now we have the chance to watch how it's been made by a real pro. Come on! Hello, how are you? Hello, mm, I'm fine, so thank good you. in here. Actually, this is the very beginning of making rye bread dough. You need water, yeast, a little bit of salt, and of course, rye flour. 
and then a special ingredient, sourdough root. There's uh, a little bit left of the old root always in the bowl, which is yes. very important for the flavor in the bread. And root actually gives the bread its taste and flavor. Mmm, fresh rye bread. Oh, this smells so good. <laughs> hey, why do you have that hole inside? Is that the traditional way? Yes. Uh, why? That's for storing the bread up in the roof. Oh. And that way it dries and gets crispy? Exactly, and also it's a way of storing it so the mice won't get to the food. That's clever. <laughs> hey, uh, this is one thing that I really wanted to show you. This is a rye dish. Uh, it's a kind of like a sweet dry pudding. Call it memma, and it's a traditional dessert in Finland, and we still eat it every Easter. It takes about seven hours to make memma, and this is kind of the traditional way of eating it. You have the memma and then a little sugar, and then some cream, lots of cream. Mm. Yummy. Mmm, it's good. Reminds me of my childhood. But I love to serve it with vanilla sauce and some berries. Hi, Andres. I'm sorry I'm late, but I brought you something. This is a sweet rye pudding memma. Enjoy. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Isn't it good? It's very good. It's got something kind of almost chocolatey notes, and, uh, and um, it's a very unusual dessert. It's lovely. I know, yeah. And then I serve it with the fresh berries and some vanilla sauce. Mm. It's lovely. So should we go now? Yes. Okay. Borgo is an old medieval trading place where European traders came from the south to buy and sell goods. And it's still a place that's known for its handicrafts, the perfect place for Sarah, who's not only a cook, but also a designer. It's finally time to start doing the dinner. I'm gonna do a mouth-watering roasted beef tenderloin wrapped in bacon, honey, and mustard. And here I have 1.2 kilograms of beef tenderloin, which I have trimmed, so it's about uh, three pounds. And first I'm gonna season it with salt. That's about good. And then some black pepper, of course. That's about it. And what about my pan? Yes, it's smoking hot. Exactly what I want. And then some oil. And my beautiful meat. There, yes. Exactly what I want to hear. So I will turn it in all sides. So it will get brown and crispy. Now the meat is ready. I'm just gonna let it cool down for a while and I'm gonna do the marinade for the vegetables. And I need a bowl. Let's just actually put it here. And I need some garlic. An easy way of chopping the garlic, I love to grate it. And you get all the flavors, so two teaspoons is enough. A small drizzle of honey. We don't need too much, but it gives a nice sweetness. Oil, generously. And then some melted butter. There. Aromatic herbs. Sage, I love sage. And then aromatic oregano. Mm. It smells so good. Mm. Now I'm gonna chop it really finely. And put it into the bowl. Then some salt and pepper for seasoning. And actually quite a bit of salt so we get the flavor for the vegetables. So there. And a black pepper. Then 
And I'm just gonna mix it all together. A really simple dressing with the great herbs. It, it's easy and delicious. So now we're gonna add some vegetables in. And I have about 500 grams of new potatoes. So it's about one pound. Let's drop them in. Then these cute, adorable mini carrots. About, I would say, 10 to 12. They're so cute. And they're so seasonal. Some small zucchinis. About, I think, five is enough. And then some yellow colored chanterelles. I really like the chanterelles. I think it's the best mushroom in the world. So about a handful. A couple of these long beans that I got from Anna from the organic farm. It's gonna give more color. Some red onions, quite tiny, and they're actually gonna shrink in the oven. And now I'm gonna toss all the vegetables and the marinade together. It's a little bit messy, but it's worth it. And then I need an oven tray. Let's pour all the vegetables in. There. Good. And I will continue with the meat. And I will add some Dijon mustard. I will spread it about, I would say, one big tablespoon. Some honey. Mmm. And to give even more flavor, some bacon. And I'm gonna use about one pack and just kind of really tightly wrap the bacon so all the flavors will be packed inside. And the bacon is gonna be crispy and it's gonna have the honey and the mustard. Mm -mm -mm. And now I will bake the dish in a 200 degrees Celsius, which is 400 degrees Fahrenheit until the meat's inner temperature reaches 56, which is 135 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> and in the meanwhile, I will go and set the table. the dish is done. But actually the meat is a little bit raw inside. So I will wrap it with the aluminum foil. And that way I will let it rest for 20 minutes. It will continue cooking, all the juices and the flavors will set and it will be perfect. You can find all the recipes at our website newscancook.com now I'm ready to plate my dish. A little bit hot still. Let's add some of those beautiful roasted vegetables with the seasonal ingredients, baby carrots, chanterelles. What about the meat? Oh, it's so moist. Oh, yes. And now my royal dish is ready. It looks divine. And I think my guests will love it. Cheers! <laughs> Visit our website, newscancook.com.